What is good? We're back in the fresh crack for a fresh ranking show. All right, we're going to uh, wrap up the rankings here with the tight ends, which I know womp, nobody womp, cares womp. about. They already um, tuned out. But <laughs> we're usually talking tight end premium. We're always talking tight end premium. Yeah. Um, these are tight end premium rankings, although I don't know that that really changes anything. Um, but is it is it 2.0? Because if it's not, it's not really tight end premium. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Um, um, but... You know, I, I, I love a and tight end premium. I think I, I put a much more bigger uh, emphasis on the tight end. I want one. I need one. I, I want multiple ones. I fill the bottom of my uh, big. If it's a bigger roster, I definitely like to put a stack of them uh, as we get into later rounds. So we, since there's probably not 24 of them that we really necessarily want to rank um, for your pleasure, which, you know, I guess we'll get kind of close. We'll, we'll throw some in at the end that, that we like. Um, maybe if you miss a tight end or you just want to throw them on the bottom of the bench, potential uh, point scorers um, and uh, potential stashes. So um, a little all in one. Be sure to like, subscribe, all that jazz. We'll be uh, doing more rankings talk on the Patreon here over the next couple of weeks, getting our, our um, rankings and tiers ironed out in order for the uh, for the regular season. Literally. Um, yeah. And uh so yeah, go go uh, go go! Give us the five dollar holler. You could just hang out for a month too. Whatever, doesn't matter. You know, help your boys out. You know, people helping people. Um, so, uh, Big D, how you doing, bud? I'm doing awesome. All right, awesome, awesome sauce. I know Kyle Pitts isn't going to be your tight end one, and I know what? Travis Kelsey isn't going to be your tight end one because you're dun, you're dun, a, dun. you're a Kelsey hater. hater. Foreshadow. I'm going to tell yeah. him you said that. It's better than foreskin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, get uh, rid I, of the foreskin. I wouldn't know. I <laughs> it's all get, the ra- it's all the rage. It's back. It's back. Rid of it. It's back. It's definitely back. Foreskin. These back. moms don't want their kids to get blown ever. I don't understand what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I might cut that out. We'll see. <laughs> that's probably a good idea. That's <laughs> ah, fine. Don't be soft. You, you know, try that in a small town. You know. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Um, all right. So tier one, <laughs> tier one, uh, I'm going, I'm going Mark Andrews, Kyle Pitts, and, and there's no chance I could not have Travis Kelsey in my tier one. As long as he's got a pulse and on the field, he's probably going to score the most points. Um, and I'm, I'm putting him in there. So, um, and you may say, well, Casey, how could you put Kyle Pitts? It's just not any good. It's wild how much people are like, Kyle Pitts just isn't elite. He's just not any good. Like, <laughs> It's just, it, it's been too much. You guys overhyped him. He doesn't have foreskin. And, <laughs> <he's>, <laughs> um, but no, man, like Kyle Pitts, all he did, it's like all he did was in his rookie year, I don't know. Did he, <laughs> did he, he had an extra game game? Right? Yeah, he did have an extra game. Regardless if he had an extra game or not, he was fucking close either way of breaking a goddamn rookie record uh, set by Ditka. Uh, so that should count double because he's an all-timer. I mean, Jesus. Um, and then, you know, this year he was a little banged up. The offense was a little wonky. Uh, I think you see a little bit different. But, you know, Kyle Pitts was was number one in unrealized air yards. Um, <laughs> oh, drink to with, that. With 422 uh, from the tight end position. And then according to Player Profiler, he was 34.3% target rate, which was number one. 32.9% air, air, air yards share. That's number one. 13 deep targets. That's number one. Oh, and number one targets. in unrealized air yards. Uh, target share percentage was number two. And I'm sure Travis Kelsey was probably number one with 27.3. A dot was 13.1, which was number two. And air yards, he was at number five. And, and you know, it came in to only averaging like 7.6 PPR points per game. But there was... <laughs> <laughs> the worst that you threw out right. the whole well, time. Well, I mean, you got you to keep it 100 because that's what we're doing on straight here. Straight facts. Yeah, straight facts. Dust them off. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's just, it's wild that like all of a sudden y'all boys are just, you, you had you had a, a really good rookie season, which some of y'all won't even draft fucking rookie tight ends because they never produced. Well, he fucking did. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, you know, they switch a franchise fucking quarterback, man, Matt Ryan out of there, who was fantastic for many years 
Uh, and then they, they're Marcus Mariota. So what do you expect here? They were kind of rebuilding. They, that's what you, you, most people aren't the Green Bay Packers. They don't go from fucking Favre to Rodgers <laughs> and then maybe to Love here. You know, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, that, that usually doesn't happen. You usually have some down years in between. And I don't know if Ritter's the guy or not, but I, I feel a whole lot more comfortable with Ritter because the Falcons feel really comfortable with Ritter. I think last year was just, hey, this is what we got. This is what we're doing. Um, so I'm leaving Pitts in there. I, I will I will keep fucking putting Pitts on the roster time and time again in tight end premium. Um, I truly believe he's awesome. Like, you can see the camp videos. There was one where... Yeah, oh, that knee doesn't look right. All the fucking PT doctors were coming out. The, uh, the flexion on the knee doesn't quite look. Shut the fuck. I'm so sick of fucking PT fucking douchebags on Twitter telling me about injuries. Side Shut night. the fuck up. Side note, we're both married to PTs. Yes. I, yes. <laughs> but they are not on Twitter trying right. to diagnose football like, injuries. Dude, from afar. come on. And then if that's what you're going to do, I don't want to hear a single fucking thing about your fantasy fucking spin on things just give me the doctor shit and move on clown anyway um <laughs> so that's that's what i got what do you got big d who's your next tier big d uh so or, i got more thoughts on kyle pitts if you need to <laughs> well we could expand it to my tier two so so in tier one I, i've only got mark andrews but then in tier two um i got kyle pitts i think at the top there um and we got hawk and goddard those are the three that i you, you alluded to it. I don't have Kelsey up there. I know it's it's I, I'm I'm going to hell for it. But, Blasphemous, um, Jesus. Yeah, but H E uh, double hockey sticks, pal. But for me personally, you know, Pitts, Hawk, Goddard, all, all three of them. I, you expanded on Pitts, uh, just just you know, wonderfully. You've you've spread like a sweat. Um, I you know I think with Hawk and Goddard, there's not much more. Uh, you know, Goddard switching over to Detroit was number two tight end, I believe, last year overall. Can prove that he could produce in the new system. He's proved they could produce in the old system. Um, sorry, you said you said Goddard. You meant Hawkinson. Oh, I'm sorry. Hawk, yeah, Hawk, Hawk can prove. Goddard, you know, was hurt last year. Um, came back. I know that they've got some more weapons there, but I also believe in Hurts' uh, progression, and uh, I think he's going to be just fine. Um, he's he's maybe he maybe doesn't have as high a ceiling as the Hawk and Pitts uh, side of things, but I think that his his floor is just as high as those those boys, maybe even a little bit higher than than Pitts. Um, don't come at me, just, mm. just saying. Mm. Um, tier tier two, Pitts, Hawk, Goddard, with uh, Andrews cherry on top. Yeah, well, I'll you know I'll, I'll talk to the big man upstairs. Make sure you don't go to hell for not having. Yeah, you go, you can hook that up. There. Yeah, I mean, I, throw me a good. There's, there's a lot of too. people out there who's you know it's the fantasy the fantasy Jesus over here. So if you're gonna call yeah, me, true. Mr. Jesus, uh, you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let my man. I don't know if white Jesus is getting me into heaven. Like. <laughs> and you know I, I don't hate the PT people that much. It's just obnoxious on Twitter how how fucking aggressive they are with it. Like, dude. Yeah, yeah. Some of them are <laughs> yeah. extremely aggressive. So everyone's um, got to have an angle or a on, shtick. On I don't hate it. I don't hate on. I don't, I don't hate it that much. It just sometimes it just really it's just too much. Like and then the next day there was Kyle Pitts videos of him just torching dudes uh, and looking right. just fine. Like I just I can't. Um, so anyhow, and he's still 22. Man. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. That's the thing that's just insane with him is he's had a good season. He's had a bad, uh, you know, a, 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 an injury slash not as great as he should have had season, according to a lot of people. But the dude's 22 years old and in a position that normally takes two to three years to ripen anyways, um, maybe three to four, depending on, you know, depending on what they're asked to do on the offense. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, the sky's the limit for Pitts. Yeah, agreed. Um, so my tier two, I'm going Hawkinson, uh, Dallas Goddard, Waller, um, you know, Hawkinson and the move over to um, the Vikings, like you said, um, it, it was it was outstanding that the, the targets um you know addison coming in uh, you, we, we could see you know a little bit of a downplay in there but kirk and him have already There's built so many a targets, little bit of a though. rapport and, and they, they, we know they want to throw the shit out of the football um there was you know 107 targets to Thielen last year so i think there's plenty of room for hawk to be elite in the uh pass catching tight end premium which is that's what you want in the tight end premium you want the targets which is yeah. why you know uh, waller's up here and, and goddard you know has just been we talked about it in a little bit of the long form show you know it feels like there's a there's a maybe not quite of elite uh ceiling 
with with Goddard week in week out, but it feels pretty safe uh, week to week uh, production wise. So um, yeah. I like Goddard, and then I'm throwing Waller in there because I mean w- Waller could could easily be the tight end one or two uh, when when this season wraps up. We've seen it before. We've seen how awesome he can be. Uh, just yeah. needs to stay healthy. And they're, they're already saying how they're substituting him out just to get other guys the ball because Daniel Jones is <laughs> yeah. just peppering this man. Um, so if he's healthy, you got a, gr- a great scheme uh, with Dayball. Um, so uh, Darren Waller making it up there um, in, in my tier two up there with just because, again, if we're talking premium, you want target elite target earners and, and elite targets. And I think Hawk and Waller are going to be that and Goddard. You know, again, I think there's just good floor there and, and just a good player, solid all around here. Uh, so that's my that's my tier two. Tier three for me, I got Kittle by himself. I think Kittle's every bit as good as all those guys. Um, it's just, you know, how, how does it work out over there? Um, it there's There was weeks last year at the end of the season with Purdy in there where Kittle absolutely carried me into the playoffs. Um, and he was just so freaking good. Uh, and then, you know, there was a lot of the season where you were like, ah, man, that, that wasn't great. I don't think it's Kittle's fault. Um, uh, you know, when we saw Brock in there, it felt more comfortable playing Kittle week after week. But again, there are a lot of mouths to feed uh, in that offense. Um, and it seems like, you know, they'll scheme Kittle week in, week out. Will it go for a touchdown some weeks? I think that's going to be the difference in whether Kittle was worth the pick here or not. Um, but I've, I've certainly, you know... In a lot of these mocks, haven't really picked him a ton, so that told me that I probably had to drop him down uh, a little bit here. So, uh, what what do you got, Big D? Yeah, tier three familiar names. Um, the addition would be Kincaid for me. Um, so we got Kincaid, Kelsey, Waller, Kittle is a tier three uh, tier three stack quad 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 uh, quad pod. I don't know quad. It's the quad stack there quadrant for me with uh, those, those those four. I'm I'm fine either way i mean i I like everything that you said about darren waller and i also like uh, at least currently i you know by the time season comes around if you're doing drafts late he's gonna he's gonna creep up i'm 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 100 positive but i think in our ffd adp we have him at around uh round eight yeah i love Um, it yeah exactly that's a smash and i think you covered everyone else the only uh new name on there would be kincaid and, you know, it kind of goes back to the wide receiver show where I talked about, I think his ceiling, his floor, they're all great, but his value isn't going to sink on me. So if I want to get off Kincaid, I can, you know, normally I'm not drafting the trade players, not, not very often, but, but, but I feel confident that I feel like he's going to produce, uh, he's a rookie tight end. So who knows, whatever, you know, the, you can have all kinds of stats on that, but I feel like he's going to produce. But at the end of the day, I know that if he's on my squad, he's going to add value. If it's not in the point scored, he's going to add value in a trade. He's going to add value in, in all kinds of things. And so for me, when I'm doing my rankings, it's not just about the, the, the total points that he can score. It's how can he help me win a championship? And that's part of the reason why Kincaid is kind of up in this tier for me. Yeah, I think you could. I think you could plop Kincaid wherever you see fit here, and, and I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, um, I, I got tier four. I got Kincaid in there, which I think he could be by himself. Uh, but I'm gonna. I'm throwing. Uh, you know, Pat Fryermuth in there with him, a number two on the team in targets last year. Uh, and I believe receptions as well. I think it would be unquestioned that Pat would be here, but I didn't really know exactly what to do with him because you do have, you know, as, as Allen Robinson washed, I don't know. It doesn't, they don't seem to think he is. And he, some, some decent reports coming out of there and he, he's seemingly going to be in the slot. So, um, you know, with, with Pickens coming into his second year and Deontay Johnson being sort of a, a volume hog and Allen Robinson being there, they got Calvin Austin who they, They've liked and, and Washington now who, you know, I'm going to assume that you're going to get some 12 sets uh, from those guys, especially because uh, yep. they could do some different things. How good Washington as is, is as a blocker. Uh, they're already telling you how how awesome he is, how T, he's, he's stymie and TJ Watt in practice at times. So you could be kind of versatile with that with that uh, scheme and that set uh, where you could sometimes even sneak Washington out there. We know he's uber athletic. Um, so I think Pat. You know, warrants being up a little higher, but this is where I kind of settled in on putting him. I didn't want to put him any lower. Um, yeah. he, he's a good player, uh, and, and he, he has been an elite target getter, target earner. Um, just needs to be on the field concussions uh, with the bugaboo 
uh, last season for the most part. So uh, I got Kincaid and, and Pat, Pat Fryermuth uh, in Tier 4 here. Yeah, Tier 4 for me is um, is Pat. He's at the top of that for me as well. And then um, I've thrown in some some oddballs here. I've got Laporta, Ingram, and Schultz. Uh, Dalton Schultz is pretty high here. But um, I I those four... Laporta, it's the same concept. I know a lot of people don't draft rookie tight ends or don't expect them to do anything, don't expect them to produce. Um, I, I, we'll see, we'll see come the end of the season. But I, I feel pretty confident in drafting him as as a around ten is where he's going in our FFD ADP. So that's kind of why he's in that tier four for me because I feel like I could replace him with uh, maybe not Pat. So maybe I, I I may have to look back at Pat because as I look at that, I try to say what is the re- um, I guess you could say replacement cost, but uh, um, so Pat may may need to be bumped up a tier after you talked and as I started thinking of it. But either way, Laporta, Ingram, Schultz is what I've got for tier four. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. Um, I like all the, the, those are going to be my next coming guys. So uh, tier five, I got um, I got Mayer uh, and Laporta in the next in the next tier. Um, just. Thought that they could possibly be up there with Kincaid, but it just seems like better opportunity for Kincaid. Uh, offense that we like a little, a little more. And obviously, we like the lines a little bit, but but as far as um, you know, things around you uh, in the Lions' offense, there seems to be more mouths to feed. Whereas uh, you know, Kincaid, we're, we're kind of hoping that he's kind of like Pat Fryermuth and is going to be the second in receptions on on that team. Uh, so I kind of have them by himself. And then the two rookies underneath them, Mayer, who, you know, I, I, I still like a lot and Laporta, I like a lot. And, and some of that is is value based because the trade asset to uh, be able to move up to one of those elite tight ends, Mayer and Laporta are, are certainly going to uh, most likely fetch you an easier uh, move up availability to, you know, Waller, Goddard, Hawkinson. Um, yeah. Then maybe maybe Njoku was would so that was kind of like my my thought process there by not having Joku and Schultz in this tier. Um, so you know I, I think Mayer is gonna g- come come right out and have a, a nice little rookie season and and Laporta. You know all reports are our wheels up, but it's it's value kind of based here as far as you know what what my return could be if i wanted to move up to uh, an elite or tight end i could use one of those two guys so that's my tier five what do you got yeah tier five for me i've got mayor mcbride uh dulcich chig and uh najoku all all kind of in that lump there yeah. um i, I kind of just lumped them all together i know that mcbride may be higher than i may be higher than consistent on on mcbride but i just i look at that offense i look at what he could bring and what he what he kind of did when when they were on the field and I feel pretty good about them. Um, Mayer would probably be higher for me, but I just, I can't get a good uh, gut feel on the Raiders as, as a whole. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so um, I, I it may be a little bit of a cop out um, ranking for, for Mayer, but I, it just, um, I, I just don't know what that, I feel like that team could just be an absolute shit show this year. And um, I think that'll tank his value. And again, when I'm drafting, I'm drafting for points first, but I'm also drafting for value. And I, and I feel like I could probably buy him in the season potentially for cheaper than what I could draft him at. So Mm -hmm. uh, when I say that in my brain and when I think about that, that tells me that I need to rank him down a little bit. And that, so that's the only reason why I dropped him down into that tier, but all, all five of those guys, McBride, Mayer, Dulcich, Chig, and Najoku all have, um, you know, hopes, dreams, and wishes, Um, you know, just, 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 just galore. I think they can all, um, easily, uh, next year be in consideration for a tier up, um, yeah. you know, if, if things go right on their team, but they all have question marks where they could definitely go down a tier. So, so that's why I kind of said, okay, this is a, this is a good spot for them, right? Right. kind of in the middle of the tight ends towards the end there, uh, five dudes. There you go. One cup. Yep. One, Jesus. <laughs> One um, big yeah. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I kind of have a lot of those same guys, but it, I got I got them a tier, two tiers below here. So my next tier is is Ingram and Schultz and and Joku. Um, I'd probably put Schultz at the top of that tier. I just I I've, I love the idea of taking Schultz. I feel like, um, you know, he could really soak up a lot of targets there. He's a little younger than those other guys, I believe. Um, 
and he's on a one-year deal, so he could come back to Houston. It's a tight end uh, friendly system over there. That the, He's coming in that Niners kind of system there. They don't have a lot of um, – pass catchers that are that are you know solidified in any role and it seems like his role should be pretty solidified right off the rip whereas you know joku probably a, a better prospect and and could certainly be second in his team in receptions uh but you know they, they've got a ton of depth wide receiver wise uh um, yeah deshaun likes a tight end deshaun could could like a tight end um you know it, it could be awesome um and and joku is is Super duper athletic and, and a lot of fun to watch. So, uh, but so that I got them all in the same tier. It's kind of irrelevant wh- which one you like the most. Um, and I put Ingram at the bottom again because of, again, really athletic, but just seems like there's a lot more target competition. So it seems like there could be a lot more up and downs where there's a big, a big week for Joku and Ingram. Um, and then, you know, the floors are, you know, a two or a three where I, I don't, I, I feel like Schultz could maybe be a little bit more consistently and, and maybe that doesn't matter, but they're all in the same tier here. I know some people will argue that it doesn't matter that consistency doesn't really matter that the over, you know, the points at the end of the season is if they're the same, you know, you, you could, well, yeah, I think it's also the way you build your team right. too, right? Like, like on a, on a team where <clears throat> you need that floor consistency, Schultz is your man, you know, yeah. for that tight end position. He's not, his ceiling isn't going to be super high, but his floor is always going to be right there. And then, and then if you, you know, you feel pretty consistent at your wide receiver two position and your running back two position, then that's, that's where you throw in somebody with a, with a little bit more ceiling like Dojoku who could definitely, you know, just gobble up all kinds of right. targets from, uh, from Watson um, or, or not because right. because of the 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 target uh the the amount of targets and the amount of um uh, talent that that is on that team so yeah all right yeah the adp screams david and joko he's he's far and away above all the other players you guys have in these tiers yeah schultz down here at 10 11 yeah joko sure. at 902 feels well, no. feels good to take in joko i know there's a lot of depth over there but yeah, yeah, he's, he's he's in that tier with those guys. I mean, I don't mind, I don't mind taking him. I'm not taking him where he's going in in this ADP. Um, that's probably a little too high for me. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, um, I then my next tier after this. Uh, did you hit this tier? Yeah, you hit this tier already, right? Yeah, we just hit Joe okay. Good, Schultz, and Ingram. Yeah. So, What's your tier seven. My my tier seven is is sort of similar to the one you have here. Obviously, I have Mayer up a little higher and Joko up a little higher, but I have McBride, Dulcich, Chig, Musgraves, and Likely all here. And it's basically the same thing that you said. Like, I think all those guys are talented. All those guys have a shot to be their their tight end. Uh, there's a, but there is some wishes there. A likely, obviously, has. Andrews in front of him, but they're talking about how much they like him, getting him a little bit more involved. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I throw him in there. Musgraves is obviously a rookie, but they're they're talking about how much they like him. Trey McBride, I think, is might, might have got a little nicked up. Dulcich, you know, could be the man. Chig, Hop coming in there, maybe maybe knocked him down a notch or two. Uh, but all those guys would be the next. The, the, those are the tight ends that you know. I want to get one of those guys on my team in addition to one of these other tight ends that we've just talked about um, because I like the prospect of what could be with all of those guys. So that's going to kind of round out my where I have guys ranked to. Uh, so that's 20, uh, 20, I believe, for me. 19. Or 19. Um, so 19. like I said, th- those I don't want to I want to I want to I probably don't want them to be my first tight end, but I, I definitely want to be to take one of those other guys in addition to another tight end, which I know some people will be like, oh, I'm not taking two tight ends in the top 13, 14 rounds. But I, I will. Uh, I got no problem with that. Uh, well, so. and, and a lot of these tight ends that you're talking about are are under that <laughs> there, you know, some of them 13, 14, 15th round. Yeah. So um, at, at least according to our RDP, Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Do do you feel like the the Bears giving Cole Komet does that make you feel any way as far as moving him maybe closer to this tier? No, I gotta I gotta see I gotta I gotta see it with Fields. Like the, yeah. again, last year what we were into was that it was Mooney and Komet, 
And, you know, they trade for Claypool midseason. He's still there. He's going to be a starting wide receiver for them. Right. They have DJ Moore. They have uh, Mooney still. They've now got three running backs uh, that, that, that they seemingly are feel comfortable with. Um, yeah. And, you know, the, the over-under was under 3,000 yards for... Uh, Smash Justin, the over, baby. For Justin Fields, which doesn't necessarily mean anything for fantasy. Smash the but, over. You know, I, I just... I got to see it one more time. And you have, you know, Robert Tunyon there, which I don't know if that'll make any difference really, uh, but it's just another tight end competition who has had a good spurt or two. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's, there's a little bit more target competition on, on an already, you know, I, I need them to, I need fields to prove it to me, a, right. you know, a little bit more before. And I think, I think, yeah, I would love to have Komet in the fucking Joku Schultz Ingram tier. Uh, yeah. I, th I think he's he's on their level. Um, yeah, yeah, so. talent wise, definitely. I, yeah. I, yeah, and I'm 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 the same way. I, I didn't move him up at all. I, I looked at it, thought about it, said yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I I I I, um, I even have him down a little bit further. You know, um, I I like a few other players over him. Like you already said, likely. I also like Jawan Johnson mm -hmm. uh, and Tyler Higby a little yeah. bit. Uh, a little bit more just because of the situation that they're in. And, and, you know, we talked about new Orleans on the wide receiver show with Olave. you know, Mike, uh, big Mike needs to be on the field, but if he's not, I mean, you know, or even if he is to be completely honest with you, Jawan jo Johnson kind of proved some stuff to me last year. So I feel pretty good about him and, and kind of sneaking him in. Um, so Jawan Johnson, Musgrave, Isaiah likely, uh, Smith and Higby were my next tier, and that kind of brings me uh, a little bit over where you were at. But but from a ranking perspective, that's like um, eighteen through twenty two. So um, yeah, and then I have Cole Komet in that next tier, and that's yeah. kind of why I asked that because he, he's to me. I, I look at it and I'm like, mm, it's kind of glaring. But at the same time, I just I don't feel comfortable moving him up. Um, so I'm not gonna. I'm not yeah. gonna. I, I like I like the idea of Irv. You know, he, he's in a good good offense, and he just needs to be healthy. I think he's he's a pretty good player yeah. as well there. Um, what'd you have? I think give me Komet over almost every player on the screen, except for maybe Ingram and Joku, and I guess McBride. I think I'd rather have Komet. Where'd Komet go to I school? I can't help. Notre Dame. I can't help with... Uh, I, well, I can't stand Notre Dame. That doesn't even <laughs> help out. It doesn't. Uh I don't know. I can't quit Cole Komet. I also didn't take a pie to the face for Cole Komet. So. Oh, I'm, I'm not quitting Cole Komet. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just like the ADP is way out of line that we have for him right now. I'm, I'm just not taking him there. Um, you know, and at this point, like, I don't think anybody wants Cole Komet. So it's mm -hmm. like, I don't know. There's a whole bunch of that. Like, I, would, I do. I do. I would just rather like, I don't I'll, I, I'm not getting rid of him. And if he falls, I will absolutely take him. But like Dulcich has a chance to be, you know, something really really spectacular in a sean payton offense like mcbride yeah. uh you know could be tied to kyler murray uh you know who who we've seen be you know a top level qb um you know you could argue commit over over chig uh but likely i mean shit he's if anything happens to is his best handcuff in the game if anything happens to likely or anything happens to andrews like wheels the fuck up and you know so musgraves is a shot so if you wanted to put uh, commit over over Musgraves and and throw, I'm fine with throwing him in my my tier seven there for sure, um, mm -hmm. but you mentioned a guy in Tyler Higby. I wanted to just hit on a couple of guys before we get out of here. That if you miss one of those higher end tight ends that we went through here, and that's not including the Trey McBride that tier seven for me, the Trey's McBride's the Dulcich, the Chig, the likely the Musgraves. If you missed on, you know, the the higher up guys like you know, Kincaid or Fryermuth or Waller or any of those guys, I think Higby is a really good option. And if it, even if it's a deeper team, I think you should put Higby on the squad. Um, he was like tight end six through uh, a large portion of the season. Um, and they don't, you know, talk about target competition. If expect Cooper Cup, you know, who knows what's going to even happen with him. And it's Van Jefferson and Ben uh, Skoranek. Skoranek. And, Skoranek. you know, Tutu Atwell, good pick. Uh, it's draft crap and all. Um, <laughs> but, you know, so, you know, a lot of, a lot of interesting things there. So Higby, if you miss, um, I like Gerald Everett. If you miss, you know, yep. you got, you got a, a, a Kellen Moore system coming in there. That was very kind to Schultz. Uh, 
Um, so Gerald Everett, I think you gotta you gotta pick him up. Um, Hayden, pick him up. Hayden Hurst. Uh, you know, again, we, there's the target competition. We don't know how that's gonna pan out. Um, a 29 year old breakout. Let's go. Um, <laughs> it's a bad breakout age. I feel like he, he's gonna be on the field a decent amount if he's healthy. He's a good blocker. Um, and 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 you know could just backdoor his way into some decent fantasy points if you missed out on a tight end. Um, Hunter Henry then super cheap um, has already super had some cheap. rapport with with yeah. um, with Mac Jones and Mac Jones has gotten some some nice little uh, reports in the last few few days and imagine that has an OC uh, you know I think Hunter Henry is is a nice little pickup and then um, Logan Thomas as a as a just a, the last kind of uh, single dart throw. I have I have some other guys that I'd like to group together there, and maybe some some younger guys that we could throw in there. But Lo- is he still alive. Logan Thomas like is back. On. He's he's thirty two. <laughs> he just turned thirty two. He's healthy. Um, mm-hmm. and he's coming from a B enemy offense. Who you know, obviously he had Travis Kelsey. So I'm not saying that he's fucking Travis Kelsey by any means. But there's the you're not not going to have Travis Kelsey involved because of the player that he is. But Logan Thomas was a really good player there for a minute. He just got banged up and couldn't get over that injury for Tied the last three two seasons. 2020. Right. Um, so if, if he's right, I mean, this is a, this is an offense that, that he's so fucking cheap right now. Um, yeah, look that, at that, it, look at that tight end depth chart too. Right. There's nobody there. So, I mean, he, he should be on the field if he's healthy. Um, so I'll, 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 he's free right now. So just yeah. just a nice dart throw. Someone might even pay you to take him. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and then some younger guys. Bellinger, who's probably not going to help you out, but I liked what you saw last year. Jelani Woods and Kalen Granson. That's kind of Jelani. Kind of sectioning off the uh, Colts uh, tight end room. And then um, the not Jets tight Bobby. end room, um, which we talked about on, on the longer version show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you brought up Conklin and, and they got Jeremy Ruckert over there. So two more tight ends that, you know, that, that's kind of open a little bit. I think Conklin's pretty good. Um, you know, I don't, I don't when when uh, Uzama wasn't playing last year, Conklin was <laughs> score points. flexible. Yeah. And, well, it's definitely in your tight end spot, but you can flex that mo- yeah. motherfucker. Any yeah. uh, anything else you want to add before we wrap this up? Yeah, I know nobody watches this anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> We're almost half an hour into a tight end video. No one's going to see this. You can say whatever you want. Cock, balls, doesn't matter. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Frank, don't celebrate it. <laughs> oh, earmuffs. <laughs> earmuffs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think you covered it all. I mean, it, I it, to me, um, these late round tight ends are the fun dart throws on my mm-hmm. on my. You know, when I'm when I'm looking in that round 14, well, maybe even a little bit later, 15, 18, 20, those type of ranges, a lot of the players that you listed are going there, um, and maybe even a little bit later. And and I, I like taking those dart throws, especially if I'm, I'm I normally am trying to build a competitive team coming out of a startup. Those 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 dudes are um, a, a good bet to to get some value that year and and possibly longer. So yeah, uh, Kate Otten was another one that we missed there. Um, well, I think that's a good yep. dart throw. He he kind of won that competition last year somewhat as a rookie and, and really didn't look terrible. So right. um, I don't I don't love the situation that's going on over there. Is it no. you know Baker and and Trask and uh, the dude who was on the Rams there was Wal- John Walford. Uh, they're all battling it out. Over yeah. There. Well, one of these bad teams that the situation sucks right now. Next year could have Caleb Williams and Drake May. And yeah, for sure. So this is dynasty and talent usually wins out so find yourself some talent and be a little fucking patient you know yeah, well sure jeez be patient and especially on your tight ends don't listen to all the tight end haters out there man i've i've, I've had a lot of success in tight end premium using those guys as as leverage yeah. pieces to move it around and all my all my winning teams i've you know shit i've had gerald everett on a team for fucking eight years or however how long he's been in the league <laughs> yeah. you know i mean through all, did, all did, of his stops did johnny smith work out no and I, did I sell some of it when he did have a little couple of spurts? For sure. Did it help me get yeah. some trade dones? For sure. Is it is yep. he on some roster still? And is he probably going to get cut? For sure. Uh, but, you know, that's kind of how that works. Um, yeah. So, you know, anyway. Yeah, and these tight end premiums, I feel like those, those late stab tight ends, um, especially during when point season is around, you know, when points are being scored, I feel like their their value goes into that late second um, with what I mean by that is like 
I can throw those in a trade and it, and it has some glean to it. Right. right. You know, like right. you see a second when it comes over in a trade, you're like, Ooh, that's exciting. But if it's a competitive team and it's like a, you know, going to project it maybe to be 210, 211, 212, it's like, is it really that exciting? Yeah. Um, and, and that's kind of what I feel like with the tight ends is like, you can throw them in there and they kind of have that, they have a, they have enough sexy value. Um, not too much, you know, not, they're not bringing sexy back, but they, you know, they're, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But they're, um, but but they have just enough, I think, to, Are you to, ready? to put you over the top, um, either in a trade or again, Gerald Everett, some of those others. I, I've played the same way. I've 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 won some decent size uh, uh, pots with uh, with some just shitty, what people consider some shitty tight ends that were left for dead. So you know, yeah. they're there's there's value that there's like, value there. Like you said, con- right? <laughs> there's gold in them shales. Uh, <laughs> Like like you said, Conklin had a stretch last year where he was very startable and premium uh, for for a nice little stretch there. So, yeah, yeah, I think I had a team of Hunter Henry, Conklin, and and Juwan Johnson. That was my tight end room and a tight end premium, and I, you know, I did pretty well in that in that league, and and they kept me in games. I mean, yeah. you know, like you don't you don't have to have the stalwarts to to win championships. There's a hundred different ways to build a team, but there's there's uh, there's value in, in, in the players. There's always value where people don't think there's value. So yeah. that's what I'll end on. Yeah. There's 50 ways to leave your lover too. Hop on the bus, Gus. <laughs> Get a new key, Lee. I don't have a clue what you're talking about. Oh, you don't know that I don't song? have a clue, foo. Yeah. Uh-uh. It's a song. Google it. It's worth a Google. Yeah. Google. Googly boogly. I'm probably not going to do that. Let's hop on the bus, Gus. No need to discuss much. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat. It's 50 ways to leave <laughs> your lover. Hey, y'all make sure that you hit the subscribe button. <laughs> if you made it 35 <laughs> minutes into a tight end video, this is for you. Uh, so hit that like, subscribe, leave a, leave us a comment. Hit us up uh, with a five-star review for listening on the podcast. Go over to Patreon.com. We got extra shows. We got ADP. Rankings will be rolling out in some sort of an order in a, in, in a minute, but we, we've got longer form shows over there. We've gone more in depth into these discussions. We got the division breakdowns. We're, 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 we got redraft mocks kicking off now because we've just beat offseason startups to death, and now we're now we're prepping for all these redrafts that you got to inevitably get in because got to get back to your roots. Mm. Got to get a few redraft leagues. So be sure you hop on over to the FF Dynasty, yeah. patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. Probably do a redraft league or two and maybe some redraft best balls there. Discord um, access. So people helping people. Got to subscribe to that. So even if you're not in there, you know, you might get a shot at, at those. So appreciate you guys. We'll catch you next time. Peace.